Son. Are you the sheriff? Not yet. But I expect to be before this case is over. Right now, I'm deputy sheriff, Tex Murdoch. I'm Larry Sutton. Glad to know you, Larry. I always call everybody with their first name, saves talk. Let's come in. I'm fixing to eat. You uh, been around here long? Only about three days, but I used to live around here in this part of the country 55, 60 years ago. What are you doing here? Expect to land a job with Mr. Ballard. Ballard? Uh-huh. Got any papers to show who you are? There's my letter of introduction. Well, it's got to be mighty careful on a murder case. <clears throat> Seems all right. You like uh, sourdough biscuits? Sure do. Is that uh, Adolf Borg's body in there? How'd you know? The news is all over Tonto Basin. Well, I guess folks feel a whole lot better about it knowing I'm on the case. Several of them spoke to me about it. They did? I uh, ain't able to locate the... Uh, Another saucer. Reckon you could uh, manage to drink your coffee out of a cup. Well, I'll try. Are you uh, uh, acquainted with the, the remains? No. What sort of man was he? Well, I... Uh, <coughs> I don't know. Of course, uh, him and me and Jim Ballard was boys together. But I ain't seen Adolph Borg in 50 years. Wouldn't recognize him if I did. They uh, killed him up there at the mine. Catched him under the stamp mill. So you were born around this part of the country? No. <coughs> All our folks come out here together in a wagon train. Old man Ballard, that's uh, Jim's pa, was captain of the outfit. Well, what kind of man did Jim turn out to be? Oh, he took after his pa, <clears throat> didn't mingle with people, and uh, they both lived like a couple of hermits. Hmm. That's the kind of man I'm going to work for. Why did you leave here, Tex? Well, my, uh, <clears throat> my father had an argument. The old man ballard over a section of land, moved us to Oregon. Been there ever since. What brought you back? Oh, I went broke and got a kind of a hankering to see the old place. I figured that uh, Jim Ballard would give me a job. Wouldn't even see me. Well, you seem to be getting along all right. Well, you're doggone right, Ann. Well, when, uh, when Jim wouldn't see me, I went to see the sheriff about a job. Figured that was more than my line anyhow. Well, the sheriff says I, <coughs> I might as well be on the county one way or another. Put me on as deputy. He was short of badges, so I'm whittling myself out one. It was a lucky thing he put me on when he did. The very next day, this fella in here was murdered. Here I am, right on the job. Say, <coughs> have some more biscuits. Mm -hmm.
that noise? What noise? In there, you better go see. But doggone it, Larry, can't you see my hand is full? Go see yourself. Probably just the wind. Yeah. You bunking here? Yeah, this is my headquarters, but uh, I'm uh, figuring on moving up to Ballard Place where I can keep an eye on things. Coroner been here? He was here this morning. What's his verdict? Well, he says everything points to that uh, Jack Parsons fellow's the killer. The sheriff's got a posse out trailing him now. Hey, you're asking a lot of questions. Are you a city detective? No, just a mining engineer. That uh, Parsons was a mining engineer, too. When I catch him, that reward money's gonna come in mighty handy. I wouldn't count on that reward money too soon. Maybe you're after the wrong man. No, I ain't. If I just had a picture, Parker, to put on that there poster, I bet you that I could get some mighty important clues. There's your picture. Is that a picture of Jack Parsons? Yes. Where'd you get it? He's my brother-in-law. This thing's hitting my sister pretty hard. Well, I'm mighty sorry to hear that your family's mixed up in this, son. Because I don't mind to shine to you. I guess it's because you make me think of my boy. You see, his, his mother died when he was born, and I raised him. He had a smile. It was just like yours. Slow and easy. You could tell that he wasn't letting go all the fun he had in him. And he was one of the first to enlist when they had that squabble over there in France. He sent me all his medals. Oh, sure, I'm just an old fellow that's got to talk a record. See, he knew what made me think of him. He was a great, big, strong fellow, stood just as straight as a ramrod, just like me. Listen, Dad. I'm sure Jack Parsons didn't kill Borg. Will you let me work with you a few days to see what we can find out? Why, well, I don't see anything again. Who's living at the Ballard Place? Just him and his help up to a few days ago, then a whole parcel of relatives showed up. But while I'm working there, I'm positive I can find out a number of things that'll help us. It's a bargain. You can help me out with some of the details. I'd better be checking in at the Ballards. I'll see you later. Uh, say, Larry, when you meet me over there, don't let on to anybody you're working for me. Okay, I won't know you from Adam. <laughs> well, I'll be dressed a whole lot different than he was. <laughs> See your boss, Mr. Ballard. He not see you. He not see anyone. <laughs> this different. You come in. I'd like to 
see Mr. Ballard. I'm a mining engineer. Oh, oh. Well, come in, Angel. Your name? Sutton, Lawrence Sutton. I'm Mrs. Bogg, Mr. Ballard's housekeeper. Have you letters of introduction? I'll find out if Mr. Ballard can see you. He's an invalid, you know. Perhaps he'd like to glance through these credentials, too. Thank you. Make yourself comfortable. Sit down. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Longer. Oh, quit whining. You know what we're here for. He said he was dying. That's why he sent for us. I wish he'd get it over with. If you weren't my sister, I'd like to poke you one right on the jaw. At least you could have a little respect for Uncle Jim. He doesn't mean anything to me. Except you're willing to share in his estate. I've got a hunch that Rita, you and I are going to get the most of it. That Rita. What's the matter with her? I don't like her and I never did. I think she's a pretty good cousin. I got an idea about that murder. I don't want to hear it. Uh, Mr. Ballard will see you now. This way, please. Come in. You're, you're Mr. Sutton. Eh? Yes, sir. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. I see by your credentials you've had experience in handling radium. I was at the extraction plant in Denver for over a year. John. Is it true that the Acme Company have just sold a gram of radium for $37,000? That's correct. One of the New York clinics bought it. Well, that is encouraging. Oh, by the way, I must apologize for shooting at you a while ago. But since the murder, I... I'm a little suspicious of strangers. So it was you. Well, that's all right. You miss me. We've had unpleasant experience. I suppose you know that my former engineer, Parsons, is wanted for murder. I heard about it from the deputy sheriff. Been a great personal loss to me. Not only was Adolf Borg my partner for many years, but he was my closest friend. I understand. You'll have to work alone. I'm incapacitated. Can't leave my bed. I'd appreciate it if you do your work as fast as you can. I'd like to know something of results before I go. I know I can ask your confidence don't discuss anything with the household. Well, excuse me, Mr. Ballard. I didn't know you were busy. I'll come back later. Come in, John. Mr. Sutton, this is John Borg. Glad to meet you, Mr. Borg. Your mother showed me up here. Oh, yes? He's good enough to act as my nurse. John, uh, you might show Mr. Sutton to his quarters in the laboratory. All right, I'll look over your properties. And if there's anything I don't quite understand, may I come back and discuss it with you? Anytime. I'll always be glad to see you. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Mr. 
Mr. Parsons' test looks very favorable. Maybe he extracted some of the radium and stole it. I hardly think so. Well, this goes into the stamp mill. Yes, sir. But if you'll excuse me, I can't go in there. That's where my father was killed. I'm sorry. Shall I have Ling Yat stay with your horse? Now, thanks. I'll do it myself later. Much obliged for showing me around. Not at all. lady I give up what are you doing here I'm going to do some work on the mine for mr. Ballard well I'm Rita Ballard his niece you must have thought I was very silly drawing a gun on you who do you think I was anyway well we're not trusting anybody around here the last few days so I've been told I'd like to get out of here but I don't want to offend my uncle well he might cut you out of his will I don't care very much for that remark then we're even I didn't enjoy the welcome you gave me either Let's start all over again. I am willing. Would you think you'd better take your gun with you? I don't think I need it. I'm not afraid anymore. In fact, I feel a little better with you around. Gee, I hope nothing else happens. What does that mean? I don't know. I think it's just a cheap trick to scare us away. All the excitement seems to center around Rita. She found the note and she was the only person who saw the man ride away from the mine. Maybe Mr. Ballard has some enemy who's out for revenge. Oh, go tend to your cattle and leave the melodrama alone. Oh, Mr. Sutton. Do we really have anything in this radium? I'm sorry, Miss Flora. Mr. Ballard has asked me not to discuss his business with anyone except himself. Oh, so you're the cagey type. If you want to put it that way. Mr. Parsons thought there was almost a million dollars worth of radium out there. He might have been right, and again, he might have been wrong. Well, that makes it pretty nice for one heir, but it gets into rather small figures when it's divided among three. Don't forget his leaving some to the boards. How long will it be before we can market it? I don't know. If there's nothing else you want, I'll see if Mr. Ballard needs me. let them upset you. I can't help it. Good night. Good night.
Is it that interesting to you? No. Do you want to keep it? I just wondered why you wanted it. I thought you were only supposed to work for Mr. Ballard. I am. Oh, I see. Rita's just a hobby. Well, don't let her pull the wool over your eyes. Maybe I like wool pulled over my eyes. Take him up, Sheriff. Got you dead to right. Sleeping on the job, eh? <laughs> oh, no, you didn't catch me sleeping, son. <laughs> Pretty good. Dummy, eh? No, that's a decoy. I ain't taking any chances of that black rider bumping me off. Well, what are you doing in this cabin? Oh, I'm bunking down here now. I thought you'd be down at your headquarters watching Borg's body. Well, I did kind of hate to leave him down there all alone, but duty's duty. And I just figured if I was going to solve this murder, I ought to be right here on the job. Well, there's plenty happening around here, all right. Got any, any new clues for me? I got a couple of things. Take a look at this note. Jack Parsons didn't write that. I know his handwriting. That looks like a good piece of evidence. And you can see by the handwriting, the fellow that wrote that's a crook. Got anything more? John Borg's horse isn't at the stable. You can't tell me he's out herding cattle at night. I wouldn't trust that fella. He's got a bad eye. What's the chance of sending this telegram? Bye. George, I was just thinking it was time that I sent a telegram. I'll, I'll get this, this off the first thing in the morning. Well, good night, Dad. <laughs> uh, good night, son. Oh, be careful, that black rider. Best people say, fancy meeting you here. I was looking for Fritz. He isn't in his room. What made you think he'd be down here? question all of us about last night. Uh, 
Miss Rita, where were you when the noise of the stamp mill started? I had been with my uncle and had returned to my room. I was in there alone when I heard it. That's right, Dix. I said to both of you down there at the mine, where were you when it uh, started? I was with Mr. Sutton in the laboratory. What were you doing there? I couldn't find my brother in the house, and I was looking for him. Was she with you, Larry? Yes. Now, where are you going to say you was? I clean catch them out there all the time. Miss Boss see me. I know, but when you... All right, all right. I'm done you. Well, where was you? I was up here with Mr. Ballard. Where was your horse last night? Wasn't he in the stable? No. He must have broken loose and gone down to pasture. And you? I was in my room, sewing. Sewing? Appears to me you're a right thrifty woman, Mrs. Borg. I hope so. I always try to be. Well, you all got pretty good alibis. And I can't point the finger of suspicion at any of you. Right now. Jim? Well, I'm going to ask you a kind of a delicate question. Did you ever figure that maybe one of your own kin might have done it? John. Get my will out of that top drawer, please. I think it unnecessary to tell all of you that there is a clause in my will providing that should any of my heirs die before I do, that particular inheritance will not be divided among the survivors. Is it necessary to humiliate us, Uncle Jim? I didn't mean it that way, my dear. I wanted to acquaint everyone with the facts of my will. Is there any reason why I should stay longer? No. Rita, meet you at the stables in a few minutes. If I'm mentioned in this will, I'd like to be cut out of it right now. I don't want anyone around here to think that I had I don't get upset, John. Nobody is accusing you of anything. Well, I know that you wouldn't. But I'd prefer it that way. Well, that's all we can do here, Jim. I'll, I'll be seeing you after a while. Puzzling, ain't it? Every dog's gone one of them. Give a good account of themselves. It shows it can't be an inside job. You're wrong, Tex. No, I ain't. We got to be clearing out of here and go find that parson fella. I thought we had uh, an. Honest... I know he's a kin of yours. All right, you go get him. I'm staying here. Now, now listen here, son. This ain't no time for us to bust up. If you think we better stay here, we're staying. There's no doubt about it. Well, we'll stay for a couple of days, but then if we don't catch him, I'll have to go out and find him myself. Now, now where, where are you going? I'm going out with Rita for a while. Now, you have not to be gallivanting around with her when you got all this work to do. Oh, I'll be back by the time you get back from the village. Well, who's going to the village? Aren't you taking Fritz down and calling on the car now? John gone? I nearly forgot that. I was counting on going up and having another visit with Jim Ballard. How are you getting along with him? Fine. If we were swapping stories this morning about old times. You know, Larry, I had the wrong idea about him. He's all right. Uh, when you go down to the stamp mill, disconnect those motors. I meant to do it myself this morning, but... I was just counting on doing that. So long.
So long, boy. Don't you think we should get out of that place? Can't have to finish my report. Are you sure it's worth it? I have to do it. How much longer will it take? Four or five days. Then are you leaving? I say so. Where are you going? Over to Tonto Rim, see my sister, and try to land a job at the Black Hill Mines. Where are you going? Back to Texas and try to sell my dad an idea that'll probably get me thrown right out of the house. What is it? You won't laugh, will you? No, of course not. For a long time, I've been thinking of getting a ranch on the island of Maui. In the Hawaiian Islands? Yes, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing, only the idea just sort of surprised me. What are you going to raise, pineapples? <laughs> <laughs> the boy does read the labels on tin cans. No kidding. Where'd you get the idea? Out of a book? No, I was there last winter. Visited one of the best stock ranches I ever saw. We can live over there. Looking for a partner? Proposing? Uh, a business partnership. I'll think it over. Hurt badly? Someone took a shot at me. Not very good with a gun, though. Must have been the fall off the horse that knocked me out. Did you see who it was? No. There aren't any powder marks. It must have been some distance back in the trees. Do you think you can make it, John? Yeah, sure. Where you going with them horses? Over the stables. Leave them there and come here. Sit down. I want to talk to you, Larry. What's up? I've just about made up my mind it's time for me to arrest somebody. Who are you going to arrest? John Board. You got the wrong man. Somebody shot him this afternoon. I just took him over to the house. Why, doggone him. Now that's going to upset all my plans. You know? That makes three that that there varmint's got. Oh, he isn't dead. It was only a superficial wound. What? It was only superficial. Oh, that's what I thought you said. Thing like that can be mighty dangerous. You know, Larry, you've got to stick more on the job. There's too much killing going on around here. Too much shooting. And the sheriff's mighty sore. Did you see the sheriff? No, I... I talked to him over the phone when I took what was left of Fritz down. I guess he must have been a little upset over Fritz's murder. Well, he seemed to get more excited when I told him that somebody had made away with uh, Adolph Borgs' body. Stolen? Reckon so it wasn't there when I got down. Why didn't you tell me that yesterday? Well, I figured it was anything to get excited about. It wasn't to get shed of him anyhow. Do you have to do that? John, you will go on with your work. Terrible here at night, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm sure your uncle doesn't demand that you stay here. Mr. Burley wants here. Mrs. Borg, 
Why haven't you put in electric lights? The household is conducted according to the wishes of your uncle. This place makes me nervous. Oh. Ling Yat, pull down those curtains. Then you think we should go on with the work? We can't make much headway with the facilities we have. What do you recommend? If it were my place, I'd tear down all the buildings, get rid of the antiquated machinery, and build a modern plant. Oh, that would cost a lot of money. I'm sure you'd be well repaid for it. But it would take you over a year to do it. About a year. I won't last that long. You'll have to be satisfied with conditions as they are. Hey, you don't mind uh, leaving that lamp lit. I got a lot of work to do tonight. Are you going to your room now? Not for a while. You can't fool me. I know you ain't stand down here just to keep me company. <laughs> Did she say good night or is my hearing going back on me? Don't pay any attention to her. She doesn't like having us around here. I thought I recommended you to turn in early. I'm going. Just waiting to say good night to you. And I don't like those circles. I'll take them off with cold cream. Hey, now you run along now and get your beauty sleep. You ain't got a thing to worry about as long as you got me and Larry to look after you. Thanks. Nice of you to say that. Oh, you're, you're on our mind uh, most of the time. Good night, Larry. Good night.
Who's there? Looks like he takes something. He's been asleep for hours. Reckon he could have been fooling us last night. Wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't in on it. Suppose you go through Mrs. Boggs' room and see what you can find out. It wouldn't do any good. Didn't both you and Rita say that when you see that killer, he was a good size? All Mrs. Bogg would have to do is put on a pair of boots and a heavy coat under that black cape, and she'd answer the description. Run along now. Oh, all right. You got a bit of good. Mr. Murdoch, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I am, I am. I, I, I know you ain't mixed up with these crimes, Mrs. Borg, but a duty's a duty. Well, I hope you haven't upset the rest of my belongings. Oh, that's the real old stuff. I shouldn't offer you any after the way you've acted, but will you have a drink? Oh, no, I, I never touch it. Uh, besides, I'm, I'm on duty. It, uh... Looks like money, money nice stuff, though. Won't you change your mind? No, I, I don't care for it. You know, Mrs. Borg, uh, I'm just plumb sorry that uh, you catch me searching things this way. Oh, I know you didn't want to do that. It probably was Mr. Sutton's idea. At times, I wonder if he really is a mining engineer. He seems so interested in this household. Oh, he's a Right, Mrs. Warren. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if you found that he's connected with that Jack Parsons. Who, Larry? Why, you're plum crazy. Well, I'm probably not as easily taken in as you are, Mr. Murdoch. Let me tell you, Mrs. Borg, I'm pretty hard to fool. Nobody ever put anything over on me. Hmm, naturally. <laughs> God, I've been working night and day on this here case, and I, uh, oh, sure, I just... Well, I just got to keep my strength. I'll be seeing you. Did you find anything? No. You know what she's trying to do? What? She's trying to make me think you've done it. Why, you don't believe her, do you? No. You didn't do it. 
Did you? Mr. Ballard wants everyone in his room. I'll get the rest of them. Oh, he uh, didn't want to see you, Mr. Murdoch. All right. I ain't a fellow that forces myself on anybody. You know, Larry, hoof prints are just the same as fingerprints. Every one of them is different. I've got a collection of all the horses in this neighborhood, including this one. And as soon as I get to checking up on these prints, that killer is just the same as catched. I tell you, I'm getting riled up. When I get riled up, somebody's got to land in jail. What's the matter? You know that horse? No. No, I thought... But I guess I'm wrong. Now, look here, son. You don't have to lie to me. There's something about that horse that upsets you. What is it? He belongs to Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons? Well, well, what makes you think so? I used to ride him myself. Well, it's funny I didn't recognize him last night. He was too dark. Looks bad, Larry. Parsons the only feller that could have been at all them murders. I tell you, it couldn't have been Jack. <laughs> well, why not? Because Jack never would have tried to kill me. I hate to admit it, Dad, but I think we'll find Jack, but he won't be alive. Would he ever give you that idea? Oh, just a hunch of mine. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it until I'm sure. Oh, a fellow rode up here with this telegram. I think it's going to fix you up fine. Wouldn't be a bit surprised to see you elected sheriff after this is all over. <laughs> well, if I am, and you ever want a job as my deputy, just let me know. She went inside the house to see Mr. Ballard. I thought Rita was here. No, I'm waiting for her. I'll get her for you. Sutton's been all over the place the last four hours trying to find her. Seen well a safe place. Are you sure he won't be able to find her if she starts yelling? He won't find her. I just uh, phoned the sheriff, Larry, and he's coming down here with some of his men. Thanks, Tex, but they can't do any more than we've done. I don't know what to do. Let's go up there at the house and arrest everybody in it. If we use some strong tactics, maybe we can force a confession out of them. That won't get us any place. They might take the revenge out on Rita. Her safety is the only thing I care about. You think somebody could have took her away from here? No. I know who's behind all this, but we're trapped. We can't make a move. See who that is. Uh, looking for somebody? 
I'm looking for Mr. Murdoch. I'm Mrs. Ballard. I'm uh, Deputy Sheriff Murdoch. Uh, mind going in my cabin where we can talk things over? Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I always have uh, Mr. Sutton, my assistant deputy, in on these conferences. You mind going in and I'll fetch him. Hey, Larry! She, 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 she's here! Who's here? Rita? No, Mrs. Ballard. I, I got her corralled over there in my cabin. Oh, this has completely unnerved me. But I'll try to do exactly as you've asked me to. You go into the house alone. We'll be watching the rest of them. Still the same neat housekeeper, Mrs. Borg. What are you here for? You haven't been here for 30 years. And we've got along all right. I don't doubt it. Mr. Ballard always seemed to be very fond of you. Where is he? He's not here. Go up and tell him I wish to see him. He's not here. You're not going up there. Mrs. Borg, get out of my way. You're not going up there to make his last hours miserable. He's on his deathbed, I tell you. Oh, I know what you want to talk to him for. It's the only reason why you came here, about the money the money that you think you're going to get out of him. But he doesn't want to see you, and he won't see you. And you're not going up there. John! John! Lignat! Lignat, you know better than that. Wife is here. Mrs. Ballard. He's not my husband. He's Adolf Borg, isn't he? Your game's up, Borg. Take me out of here, please. Attacks. Arrest Mrs. Borg and John. And Ling Yat, too. Why, they're gone. You stay here. I got to go get them. Look out! It's your all talking to you. You better stop. What do we do, Mother? There is a chance. Your father can escape through the house to the mill. He may need you. Go. 
Go down there. You want me to sign this, Mr. Sutton, don't you? There's nothing in there that you haven't told me. You killed Jim Ballard thinking you could take his place so you and your family would have his fortune. You saw to it that no one would be able to recognize Ballard's body and you had either John or Ling yet take it away from the village. You did away with Jack Parsons when he became suspicious of your schemes. You fixed it up so Parsons would be suspected of murder. You tried to frighten away the Ballard heirs by appearing as a black rider and putting that note at the gate. Failing in that, you started to do away with them and me. Your family and Ling Yat have been in on the whole scheme with you. You had your son make out he'd been shot one of Ling Yat's razors when you attacked Flora. And whenever you left this room, you had one of them fire from that window. So it would appear to all of us that you were here. You still want me to sign this? Sit down and listen to me. Give me your gun with one bullet and let me be alone for a few minutes. And I'll sign this and leave a note so you can find Rita. I don't want this state of Nevada to kill me. I can attend to that myself. You can't escape paying for what you've done. Rita means everything to you, doesn't she? She's far more important than what happens to me. And whether you ever see her again depends on yourself. You'll tell me where Rita is before we're through, or I'll... Oh, don't threaten me. You could kill me, but... I'm not afraid of death. Now, Mr. Sutton, what is your decision? I promise you I'll leave the note.
Was this Judge Blakey? Oh, you're the bailiff. Put the judge on. Hello, Judge. Oh, you're the clerk. Well, I'm getting doggone tired of talking to everybody in that courthouse. You put the judge on. Be quick about it. This is Tex Murdoch, sheriff, talking. He'll, oh, he'll talk to me. It's a doggone mad... Hello, hello, Judge. Say, uh, has the uh, jury brought in a verdict on that there uh, Borgs and uh, Chinaman case yet? Twenty years. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I'm just writing to some uh, friends of mine in foreign waters. They'll be glad to hear that. Yeah. Say, uh, be sure that somebody don't uh, talk you into parole in that gang. Especially that Chinaman. Made a lot of threats against me if I could only understood him. Yeah, yeah. Well, goodbye, Judge. Hey, I'm good, nice fella. Come on, Larry. Supper's ready. Be right there. <laughs> Guess we'll have to buy a Texas typewriter. I can hardly read his handwriting. What are those? Sourdough biscuits. Mein kind of aulipilikia. What's that? Hawaiian for we're sitting on top of the world. 